So we'll get started. We'll call the meeting to order 602. And first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. So if there's any any additions to the agenda, I know Therese has one. Yeah, I have the addition. Um, the revolving loan fund committee met with the Campbells and approved their loan. So it is for thirty thousand um, dollars. Still at four percent, and it may be a little bit over thirty months. Carol said they were just basically keeping the twelve hundred dollar month payment the same. So mm -hmm. if you guys approve that tonight, I'll reach out to Carol and he will call. Um, I think it's Jeff Lewis who does, he'll do a promissory note. They're also gonna pay off their existing loan. So they have a loan. So they're gonna pay off their existing and then use the balance. Okay. So um, wanna just put it at the end uh, behind sure. the Bethel Royalton Transfer Station audit. Yep. Okay. Approve the agenda as amended. Second. Okay. Aye. Okay. And and this evening we do have uh, we do have Kurt. Uh, so we'll uh, he's our appointment. So we'll take him first. And then after uh, we get through with Kurt, um, we'll open it up to public comment at that time. Um, we've been doing that now for a little bit because. It, usually there's not too much in public comment, but every once in a while there's an item that comment might take a half an hour and then it's not really fair to the appointment one. So, um, so we will move things to Kurt and thank you, Kurt, for coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for having me back. Um, and, uh, so, uh, I figured if it's okay with you, I'll just, give you the briefest of reports that I have at this point. And, uh, and then if you all have anything you want me to, to be aware of or be looking for or anything like that for you, then uh, let me know that. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I, you know, this is, I've completed a couple full weeks of, of legislative activity. Um, and uh, at this point, um, I don't remember if I told you, but I've been appointed to the Commerce and Economic Development Committee and uh, which I requested uh, precisely because I, I felt that that was the thing that Bethel and the other four, uh, the three towns in our district are important to them. <clears throat> and um, and uh, I was appointed as the clerk of that committee, uh, which I guess is, is something important. I'm not, you know, uh, it means <laughs> I, I handle some of the paperwork is what happens, I think. Um, but, uh, and uh, I was also appointed the liaison to the um, Energy and Technology Committee, which is the one that's uh, working on broadband. And again, um, I sort of asked for that if, if, if I could have my, my druthers and they gave it to me. And again, mostly because as, you're, as we all are aware, broadband and, and cell coverage and all those are, are challenges for our towns. And I just wanted to be right. in the mix and be able to, to uh, be part of that. So, um, and then uh, for caucuses, which are groups of uh, legislators across the political spectrums that, that choose to have common interests that they want to promote. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, Climate Caucus. I'm a member of the Social Equity Caucus. I'm a member of the, um, uh, of the uh, Workers caucus for for kind of working people and then i'm also the member of the rural economic development caucus uh, again i felt like those were areas that could best sort of serve our communities and uh, so i asked to be parts of those um, at this point though they're they're gearing up uh, everything is sort of in preparation for the governor's budget address which is coming out i think tomorrow or this week, um, and uh, at that point, since my uh, my committee is Commerce and Economic Development, we've been hearing a lot from the from the agency of, of uh, uh, community uh, commerce, community development, and a number of other organizations such as that, and we'll be uh, going over um, 
you know, allocations and that kind of stuff. Uh, as, as doesn't probably doesn't surprise you, everybody wants more money, uh, and uh, and probably everyone's going to be disappointed. Uh, but uh, but you know that's where that's where we are with that. Um, and so that's pretty much where I am uh, at this point. Uh, nothing that I'm aware of is is big and. Uh, well, the budget's big, but but there are no other bills that I'm aware of that are are hurtling at small towns at this point that are in imminent danger of becoming real and having an impact pro or con on you. So, uh, uh, but uh, you have any questions for me or any things you are you've heard of? I I I, I gather uh, Therese gets. Uh, 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 there have been times when I've sent her me memos and she's already gotten the memo. So, uh, 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 so if, if there are any things you've heard of that you want me to keep an eye on or look into, let me know. Well, I think, um, and what I'll do with, um, or, or I guess probably how we'll, we'll do the conversation with Kurt is, you know, first we'll, um, as, as select people, we can, um, go around the table. And then if anybody um, in the audience has anything that they'd like to bring up to Kurt, um, feel free to like raise your hand in the chat message area. Um, and then Therese or myself can um, call you guys, guys and girls in um, at the appropriate time. So sure. uh, <clears throat> I know the two things I had written down and yeah. one's kind of more important to our development of the town. Yeah. And one is kind of more what everybody's thinking about right now. But um, so the first one, uh, Teresa and I were talking today about it was, um, you know, we currently do have uh, two um, state highway grant um, applications in. Okay. Uh, one, one is for uh, a bridge um, rehabilitation. And the other one is for the, I'll call the rehabilitation of the Sand Hill section. Um, Typically, the state funds about seven million dollars a year in the uh, in that grant program for towns. Um, and last year, there were no grants issued because of COVID. And then the rumor was that the grant funding would be would be um, funded by about half for this year, which is three and a half million. So I don't expect you're going to say yes, no, or yes, it is. But yeah. maybe if you could look into it. I know that if it's fully funded, that I'm sure that at least one of our projects is probably top on the list that we'll have a good opportunity of getting it, which we can continue to get our ducks on the row for it. Yeah. Um, but if you say, hey, it looks like the grant funding isn't there, it's going to be half as much, then we'll just, you know, move that aside and work on other projects yeah. until that's ready. But uh, <clears throat> so that was kind of a um, I guess we, you know, we, um, Therese and I have been talking about in regards to our projects. And then I think, you know, the big one that a lot of people are talking about right now is, um, especially after the meeting last week, is the, you know, the education funding piece, um, you know, right out of the gate, it's a, you know, a 9% increase on the state education tax rate before it even gets to the local end, um, which, um, you know, a, as a taxpayer, um, very concerned about such a jump. Um, yeah. You know, usually an average increase a year, taxpayers are two or three percent, not you know nine percent plus. Um, you know, not to mention a lot of people are still um, um, you know seeing the impacts of COVID financially. Um, not alone, you know. I was doing out the math and. You know, the right now the proposed extra nine cents on the tax school rate here in Bethel, um, you know, that's ninety dollars a year per hundred thousand. So, you know, for every hundred thousand dollars of your house is worth, you're going to pay an extra ninety dollars. That's yeah. just school. Yeah. You know? And then you got to think, you know, our budget that we had proposed uh, is about two cents. So, you know, right out of the gate, you're at eleven cents. Um, you know, which is you know, hundred hundred and ten dollars per every hundred thousand dollars worth of value. So yeah. uh, that's you know that's pretty substantial. I mean, I would say the average taxpayer, you know, is what two hundred dollars maybe um, increase on their taxes, which you know, um, it's you not know. nothing. Absolutely, yeah, so, yeah. I, I don't know if there's anything better on that, or if you heard anything, or. I'm, 
I mean, you know, I, I know that it, that that there are huge concerns about that. I mean, those that proposal, if I remember right, came actually from from the uh, the governor's side, uh, and um, and the legislature is looking at that, trying to figure out what to do with that. Um, but uh, I know everyone's very very aware that that's that that's not uh, not not a popular. Uh, uh, thing to have uh, in the background lurking I don't know if you know but the um, uh, a report came out uh, proposing to uh, redo the entire education funding system uh, it, it uncoupling uh, the uh, uh, property tax for primary residences uh, from from uh, uh, education funding and that uh, you know that's a I suspect that'll be through a lot of process and discussion and oh, you know, cause it's a, it would be a major change, but, uh, but that's something that's been advocated now uh, by, by all ends of the spectrum, um, you know, from, from, uh, from the, uh, uh, you know, chamber of commerce to the NEA to, to, you know, kind of all the different, all the different kinds of parties have said, you know, the, our, our tax uh, system is, is is not really uh, it's it's convoluted and it's not really working. So uh, that would be that will be an interesting thing when that when that comes through. What's the report say, Kurt? What do they want to base it on? Uh, income. Nice. Yeah. Uh, the, this will kind of force the issue a little bit too, I think. Yeah. What they want to do is um, they they want it to. Uh, you know, because one of the points they made was that, um, you know, if you make, you know, if you make 10 times what I make, uh, if I make a you know, $100,000 a year and you make a million dollars a year, your house is probably not still not going to be 10 times bigger and, and more expensive than my house, in which case you're getting a break. Uh, now there are all sorts of income sensitivity things that are built into, you know, the homestead re rebate and all that stuff, uh, which just makes it more convoluted. But um, and again, uh, you know, on the one hand, that that makes our current tax system incomparable tax systems. It actually makes it more fair than a lot of other states. Um, but uh, but it's still you know, you're still get, you know, it still isn't uh, hitting the highest income uh, brackets. And so what they want to do is switch it to a, to income tax. Um, there were the second homes would still be paying property tax like they always would. Um, <clears throat> commercial properties would still be paying property tax like they do. Uh, and then they've also talked about actually expanding the sales tax um, to, um, to a broader number of, of products, uh, we actually have the most uh, exemptions of, of just about any uh, state that has sales tax. We, we, we exempt all sorts of things. And, um, um, and so they would be talking about cutting that down. And the idea is all this stuff would, would disperse the tax burden over a broader number of people and a broader number of, of sources of revenue so that the overall tax on property and that uh, for education and those kind of things would be uh, spread out more widely and more fairly based on people's income. Uh, yet to be seen, they, they haven't done testimony or anything like that to see if that's really true. That's But that's what the state uh, tax uh, department is proposing. So, uh, and, and, and that's good. It's It's been, uh, I think, you know, Vermont's only one of five or six states in the country that have a, a real estate, you know, tie to the tax system. Most of them are income based. Yeah. Um, but they've been talking about that for years too. So hopefully maybe they'll get a little action. Over that. They have. And, and uh, if there've been, you know, it's one of the things I did was if, I, cause I was, I think Mo remembers when I stopped by his house uh, at one point, last winter and I said I, I that was something that was important to me was to figure out why 
why our education isn't funded by income tax or something. And, uh, and so uh, I got up there and I started asking this question. And, they all, and a number of people were saying, just wait till this report comes out. And, uh, uh, and when it did, uh, then I asked the question, well, how come this wasn't done, done sooner? And, uh, and they said, uh, honestly, they thought a few different things. Um, you know, there are some people who it's going to hurt, uh, you know, uh, people with the high, highest incomes and those kind of things. And um, uh, also, if you have a high income, but you live in, you live in a condo, um, you know, that you're going to end up paying more. And, uh, and so Chittenden County doesn't particularly, has a lot more of that going on. And, and so, uh, so there's some of that. And then also just, they're sure it's going to be such a big process and battle that a lot of people have just been afraid to even go there so uh but looks like they're they're waiting in and i'm i'm i'm, I'm glad they're at least going to have this conversation so the other thing that's in the news obviously that's looming is uh the pension liability yeah for teachers and state employees now bethel participates in the state employee retirement system um so i think that uh, NEA is obviously going to have field day because they don't want, you know, the proposal right now is to not give cost of living increases. So I'm sure that will get shot down. But um, I've been, I was waiting to see if we we're going to increase our funding because right now, obviously, the um, an employee automatically a percentage of their salary goes in and, and so does the town's share. And I think the last time they raised it, if I'm, was like October 2019, I think, for us. So I'm just, surprised and, and don't understand how all of a sudden we could be short like 92 million or whatever that they need infused in it this year um some so. of that some of that was that you know of course all of this is is based on projections um you know so they're not out of money now it's just that you know and and some of that was that um uh the, it was based on projections of how their current investments would be paying off, and uh, uh, and they were they had they had been over uh, uh, over optimistic, and and so so if I remember right, uh, actually a huge part of that that indifference comes right from there. But yeah, uh, this is again, of course, from that comes from the state treasurer. Beth Pierce, and she gave us a talk on it, and she knew it wasn't going to be popular. And and I, at this point, get three or four emails a day from from teachers uh, expressing their their opposition, and and you know, and I and I rightfully so. And I think the question is going to be how you know how can they work that out? And uh, fortunately, I am I'm I'm just a baby legislator, so I'm not I'm not in a in a super hot seat like some of them will be, I'm sure. But I think it'll probably be a combination. I mean, I can see our um, on town and employee side, our contributions going up um, help you know cover some of that. So and then an infusion of cash from the state. So we'll we'll see. It's it was just yeah. interesting to hear about it. But yeah. Um, yeah. So, so Kurt, is there currently anything that is going to be on your agenda in your committee itself that may, may be something that, you know, Therese and, you know, should be looking out for, um, yeah. not, for downtown or not that I'm aware. Uh, there are some things that if, you know, they, they talk about on the board, um, you know, because when you're at the actual state house, they have a bulletin board and they put things on the board, on the wall. And, uh, and then, uh, uh, and then they, and they usually get, you know, um, you know, the, they, they get through to about, about a tenth of what's on the board. Um, and, uh, and so um, the, uh, uh, at this point, the chair of, of the, my committee, is mo I mean, he's mostly gathering that stuff, but he knows the very first thing we're going to have to look at is this budget when it when it comes at us. Um, and I, I know uh, already the I mean, the appropriations and ways and means have both been meeting and and looking at the pieces they've been able to get from the governor. But when it all comes down, uh, that'll be the that'll be the uh, the time. So my committee's mostly looking at that stuff where we've been meeting with VSAC and you know and, and all you know all 
because all the colleges are asking for more money. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, every, you know, everybody, and so we're uh, uh, all those. So Dave is in the chat. Dave Eddy has some questions. Um, yeah. Start with some comments. Uh, this uh, shortfall with uh, retirement, uh, last time I negotiated with the teachers, that was like five years ago. This is not new. This has no. been riding there on the horizon for years and years and years, and the legislature does nothing about it. So it's time to jump in, even as the freshman legislator. Get your feet dirty. <laughs> jump in. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll help you make some enemies quicker. You know. Yeah, but, uh, you can never have too, you can never have too many of those. Uh, <laughs> not, maybe not. Be a leader. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing is, uh, I read those numbers on uh, what was it, Beamer, Vermeer, Vermeers or whatever that's called. Uh, Beamers, the Vermont Municipal Employee Retirement. Yeah, you look at those percentages. My God. I didn't realize, I mean, I wish I had a retirement plan like that. Maybe we should be looking at that. I mean, if no, no cost of living, when the amount of money that the town and the employer put into that thing, oh my gosh. Hmm. So, yeah, and, it and yeah they, what plan you get. A new, a new retiree, maybe people should look at cost of living with us, uh, people who have worked for 45 years or more. They've got a point zero three cost of living raise, 0 0.03, that when you're passing out three and 4% cost of living raise to other folks, maybe they're not really realistic. So maybe we ought to be looking at that, some points to make. All right, the question I have is, I know some small business folks that are, I know our unemployment rate is much higher than we'd like, but I know some small business people that are trying to get help. And people are saying, no, we're not going to come back to work. The state or the feds pass out money like it grows on trees. We don't have to look for a job. All we have to say is we're afraid of COVID. We don't have to go back to work. We can draw employment forever. Obviously not forever. But if, if you guys would do something about that, like you got to look for a job. If you got a job offered to you and it's safe, you need to take it. All right, I'm done for now. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I may be back. <laughs> All right. I think there is something on the Vermont unemployment website about that, about, um, you know, refusing to work. So I haven't read it, but I know I remember seeing the headline. So we'll to see what's out there. Yeah. Well, people know, I mean, the two of these two people I'm talking know of, they know people who aren't working that know the job. And they called and said, we really need you to come back work. And they said, no, nope, sorry. We're making too much money. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure there are people that will always take advantage of, of those kind of systems. And the, um, you know, the, and I, I don't know what the uh, Department of Labor's you know, requirements are around that. Um, but uh, I, I, I know that there was some discussion at one point, um, one of the one of the many, many briefings I've been to where they, they were talking about that, that they, they're aware there's a certain amount of abuse and the question is how do they, how do they catch it? And, um, and yeah, and, I, and that's, it's a good question. If you're offered a job, go to work. Yeah, yeah. I, Simple. I know, but how can, how can you prove that they didn't, that they were offered the job? Well, if you want, I might be able to get somebody to, well, <laughs> yeah. It sounds like Dave's hiring. All right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, but I know who is. Yeah. yeah. I, I know, you know, as a whole, Kurt, you know, and, you know, my, I've grown up in Vermont, been here my whole life. And, you know, and what we continue, and anybody else that's been here for, you know, their whole life that we're really seeing, it happens every year, but we're seeing more and more is it's so much gets passed down from Montpelier to the local level that by the time we get the budget, I mean, th there's really not a whole lot of finagling we can do at the lower level to try to make it more cost efficient. You know, um, you know, a lot of the costs are handed down from top to bottom. And, uh, you know, like this education one is, you know, a perfect example, you know. Yeah. Um, it's hard to make up, you know, nine cents, you know, on your tax rate, you know. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and, and if you do, who at that point, who were you penalizing, right? I mean, you're, you know, additionally, you're penalizing the education of the children, right? So yeah. it's, it's a very difficult one. You know, hopefully, you know, there'll be more talks of the, you know, I don't want to say Act 46, but more things of how can we be more efficient with our money and, um, you know, you know, our local municipalities are really taking it hard, especially over the last few yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, you know, and, and I know that at least a certain segment of the legislators are aware of it. I, I mentioned I'm part of the workers caucus and um, part of the purpose of that caucus is that every, is to look at every bill and every proposal with the question, uh, how does this affect the average working person? It's, yeah. not, it's not in Chittenden County. It's well, County. yeah. And, 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 and I think you'll find that, yeah, most of these, like I said, I'm, I'm on like the Rural Economic Development Committee and stuff like that, people who are specifically trying to, to, to uh, you know, look at things so to, to, for it not to always benefit Chittenden County. Because absolutely, Chittenden County, um, you know, they have the votes, they have the, the, the money, they have the influence and, and a lot of small communities. As you look at, um, if you look at uh, employment, you know, a, a whole bunch of, um, I have a, I was just connected to from the, who was this? This is not the auditor. Um, but it was one of the people who looks at different, uh, she works for the governor's office. She goes through all their programs and looks for inefficiencies and, and, and stuff like that. And, and she was pointing out that if you look at almost any data about, you know, the, the prosperity of Vermont or the health of Vermont or anything like that, you look at it and you say, oh, that looks great. And then you, you look at Chittenden County and Chittenden County, you go, that looks really great. And then you look at the rest of the state and go, oh, not so good. Uh, you know, Chittenden County just sort of, you know, skews the numbers so, so that, um, so that, you know, if it looks like Vermonters are making a darn good wage, uh, they are in Chittenden County. Right. Leonard also has a question. Yeah. I have a question regarding the revamping of the tax laws. Have you, you say that this has sort of been sitting around for years and sort of stalling and people are hesitant. Have you considered doing polls or surveys to get the people's information to see if the people want this and if they want this to use the people to move this forward? Have they considered what? I, I didn't quite. Polls, polling the citizens, polling the towns to see what people want. Polling. That information to push this forward faster. I mean, it, I don't know if anyone has, has considered that or not. I mean, I think, I think in theory, you know, people, uh, that's what representative democracy is supposed to be is that, that, you know, people are supposed to tell the representatives and, and your representatives are supposed to then carry that with them to the, to the legislature. But I don't know that there's been a, a specific polling or, or, or uh, along those lines. Um, but it, it's not a bad idea. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of polling, um, Kurt, and I know for many years there used to be um, uh, there used to be a questionnaire that would come out from uh, the Dole poll, Doyle poll. Doyle poll, yeah. Is anybody in the legislature going to legislation going to be picking up that? I mean, I used to always think that was a really neat. You know, he used to pick like maybe the top ten, um, you know, top ten, you know, things that were going on for that past year yeah. might be, you know. Uh, 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 marijuana or something else and then you know then you could get everybody kind of feedback on town meeting day on you know do you like this do you not like this yeah, yeah. is that ever going to get resurrected by somebody else or i mean it, it was a it was a personal initiative by senator doyle and uh and it, it arose out of the fact that he taught poli sci classes at johnson i believe uh and so it was actually originally sort of part of his educational piece for his students um you know, and uh and when when he ran it long after he retired as a teacher and even after he retired as a senator but um but uh 
uh, no one has kind of picked that up. That was his sort of personal baby. But I agree. I think it, there were, uh, I, I was never 100% sure what he did with that data. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but he certainly collected it. Oh. Yeah, and I think, it, you know, maybe it goes a little bit with what Leonard was saying is, you know, at the end, you know, you, some of these maybe bigger topics, at least on town meeting day, if you can, you know, if all of a sudden you find out that 85% of the people really would like to see this, yeah. at least it kind of pushes the legislation a little bit to act on it, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and, and looking back through, I was looking at some of them from over the years and you know, believe it or not, I don't know what he did with them, but believe it or not, you know, you may be two, you know, one or two off that list did, did see progression and eventually, you know, became law or yeah. a policy. So it may be yeah. like Kurt White poll or, you know, it could be something like that or. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think he had a student staff. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, no, I just always thought it was great. And then, you know, unfortunately, you know, um, yeah. his life and then, uh, you know, you just, you know, you don't have it. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I think. Yeah, he definitely collected them. I know there's other teachers, I mean, that are maybe not professors, but that are teachers that have, mm -hmm. you know, that are senators or whatever. Maybe they'll pick up the torch since they would have students. You're right. They would, you would need staff to go through that. I remember getting ours and giving it to the local legislature and they were just, everybody seemed to fill them out. There were always were hundreds of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't see anybody else in the chat, Chris, with a question. Okay. Well, I thank you, Kurt. Um, sure. I, I would say, you know, any, anytime you, you know, get anything out of any of the committees or um, any of the programs you're associated with, if you see something that you think that might be a benefit for yeah. the town of Bethel in any which way, feel free to, you know, either send it to myself or the board members or Therese directly. And, you yeah. know, we aren't happy to look at, you know, whatever it might be. And yeah, one of the things uh, uh, I was posting on my, uh, which I, I think I, I post on a Bethel community forum that on my legislative Facebook page uh, this last week, I came across a lot of different services for people trying to start small businesses or wanting to, um, you know, reevaluate or, you know, what they needed, uh, ways to apply for grants um, and uh, those kind of things. And uh, so I've been trying to post that stuff out there in our communities mm -hmm. for people who may want to have access to that information. Um, I'm also trying to, uh, you know, I'm keeping my ear to the ground to different kind of grants again that might be beneficial to, to, um, to the town. Um, I, I signed on to, there's the, Better Places Grant, uh, which Bethel may have even applied for, um, and um, uh, and I signed on to the bill to fund that uh, because although they're they're taking grant applications right now, they haven't no have funding, <laughs> have been funded yet. Uh, they're they're guessing they're being funded, but uh, uh, so uh, yeah. but I certainly thought well I. I think Bethel's applied for that. I'm definitely signing on to that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm trying to keep keep my ear open to those, any kind of things that could benefit the, the, any of the projects, things we're doing. And again, if you hear of something, even if it's just a rumor of something, you say, I've heard there might be a thing, uh, contact me and I'll fish around see if I can find find that thing. Do we, so, yeah. Therese, do we have um, a link on our town webpage to Kurt's? legislative page probably not but i can and if not it might be neat for us to have a link there uh you know our local legislator um individuals could go to the town web page and and be able to pull up you know yours or or maybe even you know probably the uh probably should have the windsor senators if they have a page as well um, yeah i don't know that th i don't know if they do uh but yeah you could check that out yeah because um, because then then rather than like the middleman, you know, we might be able to yeah, yeah. We'll see see this uh, small business information on, you know, on your page then, you know. Yeah. So that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. One of our things tonight to talk about is that. Yeah. yeah. We the <laughs> We're going to talk about. <laughs> we get the legislative update from BLCT and I put one in the packet tonight and they always summarize the bills on the back. And yeah. um, 
So sometimes it's that I might email you to be like, is that really going to come out of committee or, you know, is that something <laughs> to worry about? Because a lot of it is just stuff that's out there. We don't know if it's right. going to come out yeah. of committee, but sometimes it's that I'll see something and be like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so, just like, um, you know, my day job uh, you know, as an acupuncturist, there's a bill that someone proposed um, uh, that uh, was sent to the health and human services uh, department. And, so I sent a notice about it to the acupuncture association. Um, and then I did a little research into it and, and it's what's called a short bill, which is basically, it's not really a bill. It's a, Hey, I have an idea. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's all it is basically. And it's not all worked out. And, most of the time, those go and they die on the wall. Uh, and so when I, I discovered that, I, I went back to them and said, you know, yeah, there's this bill says, you know, encourage insurance to pay for acupuncture. But but uh, I think it, especially this year with COVID and stuff there, yeah, I would not look forward to anything happening with that one. So, yeah. I don't know. But yeah. You have your hands so. full this year, but are mm -hmm. you enjoying it so far? Hmm. Are you enjoying it so far? I mean, is it overwhelming at first? Uh, yes, to all that. Um, it's, uh, I am starting to enjoy it. Um, the, the first couple weeks, especially with, with, with the pandemic, you know, normally they would sit you in a room with a whole bunch of other people and they'd have a number of briefings that would kind of walk through and they'd chat with you and, you know, they'd each take 20 minutes or whatever. And, uh, but instead it's, it's nonstop Zoom meetings. Uh, and my, my Tuesdays at this point between my first meeting in the morning and by the time I end my last Zoom meeting at night, I start at eight and I'm done by eight or nine in the evening. Um, and uh, um, so that's, that's sort of the way it, way it goes, uh, but I'm starting to, trying to figure out what the rhythm is and you know well you know which nights i can sleep and which ones i can't you know stuff like that so well, be good well good yeah so it is a lot it, well it, i mean again i think it, i i think it's great that you know that our you know we have our local legislators in our town you know it, yeah. it's really yeah. always handy to have that person you know yeah. you yeah. kind of know the path that bethel's been on and yeah and, and you're really local, so. And like I said, I, I really want, I really feel like um, it's important to have these kind of communications either in this format or, or you know, uh, have Therese call me on the phone or something, you know. Um, and I've tried to set that up with all four towns in the district, uh, just, so, you know, just so you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. so. We appreciate it. Definitely. Well, thanks again, Kurt. Yeah. Um, all right. We probably would like to, talk yeah. all night and get the rest of our, our agenda. Yeah, yeah, you guys have business. I I can just, you know, I, I have another meeting in another half hour. But anyway, all right, we'll, we'll, thank we'll see. Thank right. you, Kurt. Thank you, Kurt. We'll, we'll, we'll see you in a month. We'll look forward to seeing you in a month. Thank you. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Anybody have any other comments in regards to anything that we talked about with Kurt or? Okay. I, have, I have one more one more question I just thought of and which is maybe everybody will think I'm being a smart ass but I'm going to ask it anyway and with all this zoom meeting uh, if we have approximately 200 people serving the legislature receiving approximately $200 a day in uh, room and meals times six weeks that's in excess of $100,000 that we're going to save this year. Maybe we could put that towards the deficit. <laughs> You're funny. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, stand up comedian. I'm, 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 I'm very upset about that because oh, you know, right. an, opportunity, totally agree. an opportunity to save some money. Yeah. I, I did hear, um, you know, of course, I don't know for certain, but I did hear that there were some, some of those typical, um, you know, room and board type um, things that aren't being applied right now. So I don't, you know, know for certain um, on that, but uh, 
I thought they were a little excessive when it was over $100 a day to eat. Uh, I can eat a lot, a lot of good food for $100 a day. <laughs> I, would, I would be a very large senator or, or legislator if I got that kind of money. <laughs> but it would be good. It would be fun. Anyway. Uh, so we'll, um, we'll open it up to the pub public comment period. Um, so if there's anything that's not on the agenda for this evening that anybody would like to bring up, uh, feel free to do so now. You can just uh, unmute and talk away. But hearing or seeing none, we will move on. Doug's been awfully quiet. <laughs> so we have, uh, next up, we have an appointment to the Energy Committee. <clears throat> I can't remember how many individuals we had on the Energy Committee because it started off a pretty large number, but I think it dwindled down. By... It did, and then you appointed a couple people from Royalton, and Leo's been to the I think last it was at, what, five, maybe? Could be, and Leo's been to the last couple of meetings, so yep. this was in the box and that just didn't happen. So um, he's been attending, and he has some solar background, so seems to be a really good fit. Yeah, yeah, it seems it. And I, I met him uh, two years ago. I think his family had moved up here from Miami. Yeah. So yep, his wife's on the recreation committee. Yeah, they have some kids in school. Yep. So unless anybody has any. Further questions there, just need a motion to appoint. Move to appoint Leo Bangerton to the Energy Committee. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah, if I remember right, I think that might make six now on that committee. But okay. yeah. but remember we have two, yeah, two worlds and mm -hmm. representations too. Okay. And um, next on, we had um, uh, discussion in regards to H48, which um, so the legislation had um, had approved two bills here over the last uh, month. One first one was was the authorization to allow towns like ourselves that um, do town meeting day in person to allow the option to go. Um, to Australian ballot without what we'll call all the red tape that you would have to do to get there um, and, and, and allow the um, local select board to make that decision, which we did. Um, and the second piece of it that was just, um, <laughs> believe it or not, it was, you know, what was it, two Fridays ago, Therese, and yeah, watching the news and I saw it come across on, and how they put it through on the news, it sounded like the old bill. And I was like, oh my God, Therese, did we move ahead before it even got approved? And so she got looking at it and said, no, this is a different one. So um, so this last one, H48, what it does is that it, um, it authorizes a select board once again, if they choose to, um, to um, do or to go to 100% mail-in ballots like the presidential election. Um, so that, you know, is a, an option that we have, um, you know, definitely the, um, you know, there are pros, the con pros and cons of everything that we do. Um, you know, the way it's been uh, designed in the past was we've always had um, the option to, um, the option to request, request through the town clerk a, a mail-in ballot, which is still, still the case. So any individual can call and request a ballot to be sent to them. Um, and, uh, you know, and then usually we did things in person. So um, I know talking, uh, you know, talking with the, the town um, clerk that she would rather, you know, just see it stay the way it is, you know, um, feel free to have you know, as many people call in that wants or needs a, a mail-in ballot for you know, whatever the cause may be medically or might be distanced or it could be COVID, right? I mean, you know, so you can call in for any of the reasons to get one other than just doing a mass mailing um, um, due to just, it's gonna take a lot of work to do it as well as there's quite the expense to, to pay for it as well. So 
Right, because when you mail out an absentee ballot, you mail, you're not only mailing the postage on the way out, but you also are including in. a self-addressed yeah. stamped envelope, and obviously that's nothing that we budgeted for. Um, and just so people know, there's a lot of options for people to request an absentee ballot. You can go online to my voter page on the Secretary of State's website. Um, you can town, call the town clerk's office or the town manager's office during the day. Um, if you're working during the day and you can't make that phone call, um, the town manager's office has voicemail. So you can call and leave a message, um, you know, right. saying that you want one. Um, and you can also email the town clerk. So there are multiple ways to get an absentee ballot. Um, obviously, the polls will still be open at the school, just like it was during the presidential election. So there's a lot of ways that people can request a ballot. Um, Grace, was there money included in that bill somewhere for to assist with postage and? Not that I'm aware you know, of. It talked you know. about because in Act, because let's see, we have two because Act um, 162 was the original one, and now this is H48. It said that basically they could. Um, no, I mean I didn't see any money in there. Not yet. Yeah. Um, I think it it may it may come about as a reimbursement, but we're not, it's not certainly anything that they sent with it. Um, so we don't know yet. We don't, not sure if yeah. we get reimbursed. So we already got our first reimbursement. I filed not through, not through FEMA, but it was called the LGER. So I got all the money back that we had spent in, um, uh, for oh. in the transfer station, you know, for cl cleaning supplies, all that right. sort of I, I had mentioned it to Pam and she thought that there was, she had a meeting with the, oh, the election director there and the, he, she oh, thought that there was some money going to be there for the setting up the tabulator and printing of the ballot and all that, whatnot. Okay, well, I, I don't know. I haven't spoken with her about that yet. Okay. <laughs> But um, I don't know. I mean, it, it could be a reimbursable thing. I don't know. But like I said, currently there's multiple ways for people to get ballots. And let's face it, town meeting is not a highly voted, you know, thing too. It's not the presidential election where a lot of people. <coughs> so, but and, and I, Leonard has a question too. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and and I'll get right to you here just in a second, Leonard. And I had talked to um, Kurt White as well there a week or so ago. Um, and, and he had mentioned as of right now, anyways, there was nothing set up financially to reimburse the towns. Doesn't mean that there won't be, but as of right now, you know, the switch that we did from in-person to Australian ballot, there's no uh, compensation currently um, as well with this H48, um, you know, the way it stands right now, there's nothing tied to it financially, but you know, you never know, it could be. Um, so uh, yes, Leonard. As the mail and ballot option is so new, um, how are we really forcing the information out there to the citizens of Vermont, of uh, Bethel? You know, we're doing things, are we adding to that so that it's more widespread, so that people really know the options? How are we doing that? How are you yeah. doing that? After this meeting, because they needed uh, obvious, because the it was funny to me that the legislature gave the decision to the to the select board, which I think is funny because the town clerk has, you know, is also elected right. on a similar playing field. So we needed to wait to see what the select board was going to do tonight. And then Pam's going to put something in the paper. We're going to do front porch forum. We're going to do Facebook and um, the website and, and um, to get the information out so that people realize that there's four options for them to get a ballot. Um, an initiative on their part, but there will be four options. And we're going to do, like I said, add in the paper for the Herald um, and all the other options that we have available to us via social media. Oh, OK. So you're going to use Instagram and all of that? And... Well, we don't do Instagram. We do Facebook and the website. So we'll put it out on Facebook. We'll put it on our website. And we'll put it on Front Porch Forum. And we'll put it in the Herald. So those are the places that we use. Um, and, and, and two, the information is going to be distributed because of, you'll see it, I think, with on the news possibly because other towns are going to follow. I know it looks like Royalton at this point from what Pam thinks may be doing the exact same thing. I think you'll see a lot of the towns choose not to mail and to have voters participate in the 
by requesting the ballot like they normally would. And I, I completely get the mail thing. I, I know that's expensive. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, have we just making sure that we exercise outside of the envelope anything we can to get this information out there? Because it's new and people don't won't really be familiar with it and recognize that it's happening. Right. Well, people have been able to request an absentee ballot for years and years and years. So there's always been that available. But I think you'll see some advertising maybe from the Secretary of State's office. And at least I like to think so, that they'll do some, you know, preemptive strike from, from above. Uh, we certainly will use the avenues that are, you know, open to us to um, and, let people know. And we'll definitely do our best. And I, you know, fortunately, I think when you have such a a drastic change in a short period of time like we have, you know, because everybody in Bethel is used to meeting in person and doing all of our conducting our business in person to now um, doing this, um, I guess you say remotely, right, come in, do your ballot, that I think there's definitely going to be hiccups in the system. And unfortunately, there's probably going to be um, some individuals that might be misform misinformed on um, of certain things, but I, I will, you know, definitely do our best that we can to get the correct information out there um, to everybody. But um, the other thing we should talk about is safety at the polls, because Pam certainly has been all the town clerks, not just Pam, were sent um, bottles of hand sanitizer, um, you know, screening face shields. So um, if you voted in person at the presidential, it, it was pretty slick. Um, they had people set up so you could get right through and she had a table out in advance of, of masks, anything in case you didn't have it. This time um, it's better, even gonna be even better because while she had a great setup at the fire station, this will be at the gym. So it'll be bigger, which is nice. So she'll be able to have everybody really kind of spread out. I, I was actually kind of shocked that the legislation um, went and allowed that at the select board level because when you look at the way the um, the town clerk operates, you know the town clerk is a voted in position, and, yeah. And typically, you know, you know a lot of individuals don't understand that the town clerk has a lot of different um, uh, powers that you know that supersede the select board or or the town uh, because it's a elected official, so. I was actually surprised that they went that direction and they didn't just leave it up to the town clerk mm -hmm. to, um, to, to decide that, but. Uh, Me too. It could have been just down to money because you guys have control of the budget and she doesn't. So yeah, I, maybe. I, was, I was shocked too. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so you'll just need to um, decide if everybody's on board with that or. And, and that's why I, you know, that's why I talked to Pam because it's, you know, I guess the way I see it, it's, it's her, her elected duties and what, and you know, what, you know, how would she like to do it? And um, yeah. it sounded like from the talk that I had with her that she would like to do things the way she has done it in the past, the way they're set up to do it, which would be um, to have ballots in person and then anybody that, that wants a mail-in ballot that she will get those to them. Yeah, so. that was my conversation with her and, and certainly Paul's the chair of the BCA and, um, so there's other people here to weigh in, but. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, what does the board feel? I mean, do we want to stick with the process that we have in, in hand or would we like to change that or? Well, I, I had a conversation with Pam about it from a BCA kind of point of view. And it seems like she really has a good plan. Uh, we'll have the tabulator there. So the only thing we'll need to deal with are any potential write-in um, votes that come along and uh, we'll have a better setup for going through the ballots afterwards and uh, it seems like she's got a, a good handle a good control on how how it's all going to happen it's a very safe uh, environment over there at the gym so I, I would i would be in favor of leaving it uh, the way we have it i agree uh, mower lindley yeah, I'm inclined to go with um, where Pam is feeling just because it's sort of her jurisdiction. I, I'm assuming Mo agreed too, but he was still on mute when he was talking. Yeah, he looks like he's fixing it. Um, there he is. Eric, do you hear me now? Yes. yes. I agree. <laughs> I was reading your lips, Mo. I, I kind of knew what you were saying, but. 
You are muted. You get that waiver. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I don't, I don't think you necessarily need any motion because we're not changing anything. So, nope, I just sounds anything. like we're all in agreement on, on keeping it the way that um, that we have done it. So, okay. Does anybody have any other further comments or questions in regards to that? Okay. Um, and then we had a couple of liquor license renewals in there, a, third, a first and a third class one for Tozier's. So we'll just need a motion to approve and then we will have to stop by and sign those at, at the office. Yeah, they're at the back door on a clipboard, oh. just like we usually leave them. Second. Okay, Mo well moved it and Lindley seconded it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. And and did the Mascomo bank change term loan? Was that the one that you told me you didn't quite finish or is this one is finished? This is finished, yeah. This okay. is, yeah, we talked about it. No one was happy, but this is what we got. So we have to, um, so it's We're also down. it's also <laughs> at the back door um, with the liquor licenses for you guys to sign. Looks like I don't need to sign. Oh, really? I don't I saw, know. Yeah, three I know. spots. Only four. Uh, just put your name on it anyways. Well, I'm sure we can fit your John Hancock in. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they didn't put five. Huh, that's odd. Well, I remember for a long time after the board went to five, we had three. Every oh. signing had three spots for the longest time. Yeah, I didn't even catch that. She asked me who they were. I spelled them all out for her. I didn't even catch it. But you can just sign it and put, write, put your name under, and then she'll have it. Do you actually need a motion for this, or? Yes. So just need a motion to approve the change in terms for the loan um, for the Mascoma Bank. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Under protest. <laughs> there you go, it's two of us then. We'll, ha we'll have to shop around next time, Therese. Well, you guys had already, <laughs> this was the money that had long been spent and took out the size of it being something other than it was. <laughs> We're lucky they agreed to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then next up, we got the, um, uh, a draft of a social media policy um, yep. discussion only item for tonight. So we won't be making any decision. Um, no, this is just, I started work on it we should have had one, frankly, years ago. And um, so I have a list. I had Kelly go through the policy book and it's scary. There's some of them that are still like in the nineties that haven't been revisited. So I figured we just, I'd tackle them one at a time. So I'm do this one, then I'm going on to the personnel policy. Um, so I really just wanted you all to see this. VLCT's template is like 17 pages long. It's a big <laughs> deal. Um, because of social media policy, I don't think that people realize that when you promote discussion, like on Facebook, you could be violating the open meeting law or your, that's the Public Records Act. And so there's a lot to it. For example, the town um, has a Facebook page. And I finally had Kelly shut off the comments because obviously it wouldn't surprise you some fairly not nice things were posted on there. And we don't have the staff to maintain it 24 seven. So mm. this way, you know, I tried to look at this policy in, in a way to, uh, for us to distribute information so people can read the information, but we're still encouraging them to participate in duly warned meetings or calling their local rep, you know, their local, maybe call a select board member or call the office. but we can't have ongoing discussions on Facebook. That's just not appropriate for us. And you have to keep a lot of that stuff. And so there was a whole lot to it. So this is really just a draft. Um, I have already talked to Rita, who sits on the Equity and Inclusion Committee, and she's agreed to look at it. Um, I'm gonna have Kelly look at it because she deals with social media. I'm gonna ask Nicole um, 
see her because she, uh, I don't know how it happened, um, but the energy committee has a Facebook page. I'll have Dietri look at it because she, Direc, I think Direc has their own or has her own page. So, and I'll get Pam, you know, I'll get a lot of input and I'm also going to, um, that way we can get feedback and I want your feedback. I want you to read it. And then if you have questions, either write, write on the policy and drop them off or, you know, send me an email and it's going to take a little bit of time. As you can see, it's, it's lengthy and it mm. covers a lot, you know, first amendment rights and what our rights and responsibility are of removing it. But, um, mm. I don't have a problem with, you know, like people having a Facebook page, for example, We'll use the energy committee. I, I don't know how they got one. Oh, the conservation commission, Lisa is saying, has a Facebook page. But, you know, with that, um, you know, comes great responsibility. And I have no idea who authorized these things to start. So um, I have another committee who might want to do a website. So I said, okay, but you have to come to the select board because I don't know how these others got started. And, I, and um, that way people can talk about it because – Yep, the fire department has one. That one I knew, too. Yeah. And um, so, you know, that's what's that saying? With great power comes great responsibility. So if somebody has a Facebook page or a website, they have to be in charge of it. They have to monitor it. We do not have staff to do that. And um, so I think what we need is a policy, which kind of helps someone if they're going to if they're going to have a Facebook page or a website, right. you guys have authorized. Um, but I also think it's important that the select board gets these requests. That way, um, a couple things happen. A, you know what's happening. B, everybody's doing the same thing. If our Facebook page doesn't allow comments, maybe nobody's should. You know what I mean? So that way, everybody has a set of rules. I also don't want someone to get the town sued because by the – conservation commission and the, and the fire department and, and then the, don't worry about that the fire department also has hipaa laws oh, because yeah. if there's a fire and photographs and yeah i think there's a lot more to it than people realize and um i just want to make sure that it's also fair to the person overseeing the website or the facebook page that you have some rules because you could inadvertently get yourself and or the town sued by no you know by just not understanding all the rules that are or the laws that regulate it so um, I'm, I'm not anti social media. Well, maybe a little bit, but <laughs> just, to, just, um, but I think it's important that, that we have one. And, um, so that's really all I wanted you to know was I was working on this list of policies and would just like your input on it. And I will certainly send it now. I'll find someone on the conservation commission. I want to make sure, yeah, I'll send it to you, Lisa. I just want to make sure everybody that already has something existing gets input on it. Um, and also then everybody has the same rules. Right. So I'll put Lisa. I think, Lindley, did you have a question? Um, yeah, more more of a comment. Um, I, I mean, obviously this is a, a lengthy document and one of the first things that was occurring to me is uh, that some people might not read it. And I wonder if there's, because I, I like that there would be like a designated agent. So from the Conservation Commission, there would be somebody who is responsible. So we have a point person that we can go to should something come up to say, hey, what happened here or, you know, what's going on? But um, it made me kind of think that while they that designated agent should be required to read the full policy, that maybe also having um, a consolidated, like, here is what your responsibilities are, one or two pager that then they sign, that then that sort of is that a little bit of a contract between us to say, hey, I understand the responsibilities. I can refer back to it if I'm unsure i don't have to go through this whole 11 to 12 page policy but then to have that sort of signed okay i'm designated as the person in charge of this so just something to kind of add add to the to-do list well you are so good because there is a page that came with a policy um that does exactly that and i didn't include it in here um but i i agree oh I, but i agree oh lenny has his hand but i do agree that um a, a checklist kind of saying okay you're going to sign off that you've read this policy and that if you've had any questions, you've asked, but yeah. here's a checklist. So we're all following the same rules because even if you get rid of somebody, if you say you remove a post because, you know, it was horrible. Um, we've had a couple. I know you find that hard to believe, <laughs> but um, you have to save things and there's a whole system to it. And if I didn't like what you said and I pulled your post, but I didn't pull you know, Leonard's 
then, you know, somebody's going to have a field day. Who's making these choices? So I feel like we really need to have a good set of, you know, rules. So like I said, it's yeah. just the beginning of the policy. And I just wanted you all to see it and get your feedback, which will compile with Lisa's and Rita's and fire department and Nicole and, you know, try to get a bunch of people together. So. And, and I think it's great. And, and, you know, this is just another one. I mean, we've, how many different policy revisions oh. done in the last two years? I mean, I know you should see the list. We haven't done. And Lisa is our uh, witness to all these. I mean, some of these were like dinosaurs. I mean, you know, policies that were written in the 50s and 60s and 70s and and uh, why we still were functioning with those same things was beyond me. But, you know, and this, yeah. this, uh, social media policy is just another one. I mean, we went through the personnel policies and all those. And, yeah, and we got to go through that again because it's changed and there's still yeah. some policies from the 90s. But That's good. this is one that, frankly, you should have had. Um, I had done in another town in 2014, if that tells you how long this policy has been out there. But Leonard had his hand up. Whoever's assigned, I just have an idea. Whoever's assigned for me to be in control. I can't hear you. Whoever's assigned in each committee to monitor the social media platforms, is it possible to have a meeting with just them to go over everything and make sure that each or each group is each entity is on the same page? Because you, I mean, I know the Equity Inclusion Committee, we're sort of working with the website with them, and we came to to Terry, because we didn't know what the rules were. Right, um, exactly. We, no well, we didn't know what the rules were either. <laughs> yeah, you're well, right. Yeah. I, I did actually, I started like developing yeah. the website and then uh, after the first draft, I said to myself, well, what can we even put on here? Is there any rules? And that's how I got to you and we right. contacted yeah. you, you know, because we were, yeah. uh, I didn't want to, spend a lot of time and then you guys would say, oh, no committee can have a website or something like that. You know? right. Just be, Go ahead, Lenny, sorry. Uh, we know, you know, like anybody who's contributing or assisting, but the people on the committee know exactly what the rules are. It's great if they collectively meet with somebody from the select board and get that, get that down. Yeah. I agree. I think that Chris's idea of a checklist is good yeah. because First, we'll go through the policy, and I'm going to send it to everybody or you know, a bunch of people to get feedback. Then I'll take their feedback, and we'll compile it into this new draft, and then definitely have a meeting. But I think it's important that if somebody's going to have a website or a Facebook page, they should have to get permission from the select board. I, I don't think any every Tom, Dick, and Harry should have one. I know the fire chief has had problems with his website, um, and because you know, like I said, he has HIPAA rules, which apply if someone took a photograph at an accident. So it becomes, you know, a bigger deal. And I don't have the staff to manage it. And right. so I think the other thing about this policy that I like is it requires at least us in the town office, maybe we have a little, you know, notebook in the vault. So we have everybody's um, username and password. That way, if God forbid something happened to somebody, um, that's in a central location too. So maybe, you know, someone comes forward from the committee and says, hey, so-and-so's, you know, sick or whatever. And maybe you didn't know what, what it was that at least now, you know, we'll know what it is. Mm -hmm. That's actually a really great point, Therese, that, um, and maybe even having the, the town has control of the actual accounts and controls, like is the administrator on the accounts and controls the passwords because like, when the group started, um, when COVID started and the group was formed around Bethel Strong, there was a Bethel Strong from Irene group, but we cannot figure out who is the administrator on that. And we actually think that the person who started it and is the administrator has passed away. And so oh. here's a Facebook page yeah. that no one seems to be able to get access to or remove, but is now not doing its job and getting in the right. way of an active group trying to do a job. And so I think definitely having, having that layer of control over, over access into the accounts is going to be key. Yeah, I think so. And I just want everybody's input because as you can see, this thing is daunting. It's huge. Mm, yeah. And, and you know, when you first read it, you think, oh, it's crazy. It shouldn't have to be this big. But then once you yeah. realize everything mm -hmm. that it entails and how many laws it touches, you're like, wow. So just a couple of comments. I hate, I hate to play devil's advocate, but you, you mentioned that in your manager's report 
the town owns the liability for these for these sites. So and and the committees, people come and go. You know, somebody's running the show one year and then maybe they get off and somebody else comes on. So it just it seems like an area of uh, confusion. And also maybe all of these Facebook pages and whatnot should have no comment, the ability to shut off comments. I and use it, it as yeah. it intended to is just putting the information out there to promote, or we're gonna have a meeting uh, at such and such a time and place to accept ideas on, on different topics, but right. not just avoid the whole comment uh, part of it uh, yeah. too. So yeah. just a couple of, or, you know, or certain projects they're working on, you know, um, you know, I, I definitely agree with that. I think, you know, you kind of, I guess, one way information, right? Information out, but not in. Um, I 100% agree. And I definitely took that spin on it when I was, I took this original, um, you know, model from VLCT. And, and that's exactly the bend I took to it. Mm -hmm. I think you're 100% right. And, and certainly, um, so that was my bend. I tried to change the language as I went through it. But well, I mean, unfortunately, we're not a large enough municipality to be able to afford somebody to do this for us. But, you know, I mean, the larger cities and towns, they have, um, you know, social media coordinators. I mean, I think Lindley, the school has one, um, you know. So, you know, a lot of identities, you know, your employer, you know, large employers have them and, um, and, and unfortunately for our side, we, you know, we can't afford to uh, pay somebody just to do uh, social media. But um, I like, uh, I believe it was Lindley's, you know, we're just talking about, you know, that the town is in control of it. But then you're going to allow certain users to, um, you know, one user per committee to, you know, be responsible for it. And I think so. And, it, and it's tough, too, because there's so much to it. And I mean, hey, if we had money for more staff, I don't want to hire a social media consultant. That wouldn't be the position I would <laughs> I mean, we have enough problem managing our own website. You know, Paul, yeah. helpful. Other people kind of chime in when something's wrong. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you have five minutes, we'll try to go through it. All the links work. And, so the and, it, and it's, um, you know, and things change. So, and certainly our whole mission is to disseminate information, but to get people to come to forums like this um, so that they can talk about stuff. So. so what is the timeline goal, Teresa, are you thinking for this? Would you like us to provide our comments uh, between now and the next meeting? And then you're going to bring a, a draft ready to be approved for the next meeting type deal? Or no, it'll probably take a month before okay. I get through. Because what I'm going to do once, now that I know you guys have looked at it, I will expect to see your input in in another week or so, um, if you, you know, in a week would be great. Um, and then tomorrow I will send it off to everybody who's agreed to look at it and give, you know, they're going to need a couple of weeks to get through it because they got full-time jobs. Oh yeah. Right. It's daunting to get through. So, you know, it'll probably a month, month and a half, but while that's out there, you know, um, kind of, uh, you know, everybody's looking at it, taking a peek. I'm going to start the next one I have to do because I have, there's some issues with it. I need to deal with our personnel policy. And um, that one's going to be easier in the sense that I'm going to draft to get the employees to look up. I'm going to send it to the lawyer uh, because there's some legal stuff we need to address. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, so, and then, like I said, I had Kelly make an index of all the policies and whew, some of them are really <laughs> old. I haven't even well, read. You know, oh my God. More than half, probably. I just saw the date on them, and I'm like, "Oh Lord." I mean, the good thing is we we are updating these policies as we are. Yeah. Them, which yeah. Oh, and I did receive a nice email from Laura Perez of the Equity and Inclusion Committee. Uh, they have a subcommittee that is um, going to, and I responded to her email today. Get together some ideas on, um, and they're gathering information from other places. So basically. What I, what I gathered from her email, which is what I'd like to see is some sort of like guidelines checklist so that when I am drafting policy, there's maybe specific language um, that 
that needs to be in there or that we can use. Um, right. Certainly, I've been used doing that with the zoning. We did it with town plan as kind of a group effort, as Leonard and Tom, Lenny and Thomas know. And now I'm doing that, you know, with the zoning, and I've actually been helpful because Owen's on that. He, we're doing this joint DRBPC, so Owen has been super helpful because I'll read this section and be like, oh, this, this is old. This doesn't sound right. He'll be like, how about if we change it to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, perfect. So it's kind of been nice to have a fresh set of eyes to take a look at um, once we got through the town plan. I certainly learned a lot about, you know, accessibility and some of the wording. And and so that's mm -hmm. been, you know, helpful to apply that with the zoning. So I think if the Equity Inclusion Committee comes up with this, you know, guideline, checklist, whatever you want to call it, um, that would be wonderful. So um, I'm excited that they're working on that. All right. So any further discussion with the social media policy or are we good for this evening? Are the policies something that we can see um, on a website or in the town office? Is that publicly accessible? Yeah, some of them I think are, don't hold me to it. Maybe it's just the ordinances that are on the website. Some of the policies, um, yeah, they're all in a binder. You could, if you wanted to see something. What I could do is, if you're interested, just email me, Jesse, and I can always scan you the um, the index that I had Kelly create. So you can laugh along with us and say, oh my God, some of these are so <laughs> old. So, you know, it's a process. And, and I know Laura had asked because it was Laura and Jerry and Owen and you know who are anyways and so it, it's all fine you know and, and I think mm -hmm. what we'll do is as you guys are working on crafting your stuff um, when I go through them you know I have questions I can I know I could reach out to Laura or Rita or yourself Jesse and someone would help me with it so um, but the personnel policy is next for me just because I you know have some issues that I need to deal with there and, and I know some of the information is not up to date. But yeah, if you want that, just send me an email to remind me and I'll scan it to you. Okay. All right, well, we'll move on. Uh, next, we had the Better Connections grant letter of intent. So we're looking for a couple of seniors that live in Bethel that would be willing to be on um, this commit be basically on a on a kind of a committee to get because we're trying to get some input here we are writing it as you can see it's the it's this is the seven thousand dollars that we've been budgeting for the last three years for the energy committee yeah. so i finally talked to them and said listen <laughs> it's going away after this so we got to do something well owen myself um nicole sear and uh, uh rebecca sanborn stone had been meeting to talk about this. And so we kind of came up with this idea about village accessibility. So from eight to 80, um, as we know, a very typical issue for Main Street is accessibility to the businesses. So, and Rebecca thought that would be a nice um, twist on the application. A lot of people, um, you know, there's some standard stuff, but this would be unusual. She also reached out to the lady at AARP and they would be willing to, you know, send a letter and, you know, be of support of it. So what we'd ask for is basically what we're going to be looking for. Um, this is not for construction projects. It's for plans. So what we talked about was doing an accessibility plan. So we could actually, that something that could be kind of broken up in bite-sized pieces that we could actually afford. Because, um, you know, we all been to towns where you have these wonderful plans on the shelf that there's no way in God's green earth you're ever going to get the money to build it. And uh, so that's just a waste. This is something when we put out the RFP that we're going to have it um, so that we could do something in stages. The other thing we came up with is low cost ideas for each business. So say babes, um, since Jesse's sitting here, what's a low cost thing that babes could do that would make their building more accessible. And Owen definitely liked that idea. So that way we get something per business and then something, you know, as the town. Um, and also maybe trying to create, connect in what Rebecca Ward uh, kind of uh, uses as a, she calls it the necklace, you know, if we connected Peavine and the downtown. And so we don't want it to be so big that we can't get anything out of it. Um, because, you know, if the plan has two 
high of a you know threshold, we'll never see anything. The other part of that was going to be um, so accessibility, and then may, I guess they like to see some sort of economic uh, survey. So part of it that um, Rebecca was thinking, or maybe it was Nicole was thinking, maybe you could do some sort of um, you know, why are you losing? Where why when people aren't coming to shop in downtown, where are they going? So you can kind of take a look and see, you know, where the where the customers are going. Um, so um, let's see. So yeah, so we're looking for a couple people to be um, a couple of seniors to be on the committee so that they can kind of review this and also be part of the RFP. What would you want to see as a senior? So that's something that we're, if anybody knows of anybody or wants to volunteer, um, that would be great. Our next meeting, I think, is I think it's next Thursday, or no, maybe it's, it's this Thursday, I guess. Um, so that's what it is. So that's the money that we have. Um, there's a, also a stormwater component to it, but we have to see what that is. You know, basically the discussion was if it was going to super increase our grant match, we couldn't afford to do it. Um, and we have not decided what that stormwater sec part could be. So we're working on that. Teresa, a couple of people that come to mind. Um as potential committee members, um, you know, Rebecca had asked me this and that there are probably half a dozen to a dozen people who are, are probably 60s and up that walk in town every single day. And um, one, so like uh, Carol Ketchum's one of them. There's a woman who, I actually can't remember her name, but I, I chat with her occasionally um, that she and her grandkids walk, she walks through town probably four or five times a day and you know, occasionally she'll have her grandkids. So there's, um, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, so you know, there are, there are definitely a handful of people that are actively using that accessibility. Um, and so, like, I think that uh, Carol might be a great starting place, and then he might even have some other suggestions. Okay. Um, I think is that would it be Norm, great. Does Norm Whitcomb also, uh, Lisa? You might probably know. No. There's a guy who I, I'm picturing, but I don't know his name. He work, he walks, like he just goes and he does Andy, not stop or look at you. Is that Danny White? Yeah, Lisa's saying okay. yes. It, it okay. Danny White or Scott White? What you got there, Lisa? Well, Scott Putney walks every day. Oh, Scott Putney, okay. Um, but he's he wasn't who I was thinking of. Um, but yeah, there are a number of people that I think would be great for that as they use it for exactly what the grant is kind of going for okay and new would come walks down through there that's, thank yep. you that's what i meant yep. okay i'll reach out then to a couple people and invite them to the next meeting lisa saying cliff ciphers um and then we can um you know i'd like to try to get a couple you know people on so it's also going to become a kind of a steering committee so it would be a bigger it's not going to be just a one one and done it's going to be help us get the application and then let's get the RFP out and Nicole Sear luckily has taken on a good portion of it she's wanting to do I said no I don't have time to do with that I just can't and um, the other piece was we did reach out to two rivers so they will do a little bit of it because only 10 percent of the grant can go to something like that so that would go to two rivers but Nicole actually is um, excited to kind of lay things out and and um, so I think that'll be helpful um, I just said, you know, I'm happy to pay the bills and do the reimbursement, but I can't, you know, be the liaison to set up every meeting and it's just going to be, it'd be too much. But I think the overall feel is great. I, I like the idea of making, you know, Bethel more accessible. And, and that's a problem we had in the town I came from. This, it's the way it always was. Sidewalks are lower than entrances to the business. You have a big entrance to your business, right? Lindley, the stairs. So you know, I think this would be a nice topic. And, and like I said, as long as it's laid out, so we actually it would be doable. You know, that's the thing. It's not just some crazy, um, you know, scheme that we can't. So um, that's it. Therese, just as an aside, because this whole conversation has brought it up in my mind and I've been meaning to say it for a few weeks now. Um, when it snows and they do the snow removal, they've not been actually clearing the um, the curb cuts. 
so that the snow is just piled at the curb cut and you have to actually walk up and over the pile and at some point somebody's going to complain or get hurt trying to get over a pile uh, i think it's just probably with a lot of turnover of who's doing it they didn't know to necessarily go and clear out each curb cut where there's a crosswalk okay so when you say curb cut you mean where it goes down into the like those little things with the yeah. bump the tr truncated it, it, accessibility okay, the ramps sorry. um but none of the ones on main street have been cleared for okay. any of the snowstorms and i keep meaning to bring it up to you oh i'll let alan know because he hasn't changed so he should know that that needs to be done so accessibility to crosswalks need to be cleaned out Thank all you. right i will let him know thank you for telling me Sometimes I drive through, I just don't notice that, you know? So I will tell him tomorrow. All right, well, that's a great list. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa's like kicking out the names over there. So I have a good list, but if any of you on the board um, are a senior and you would like to be on this committee, certainly let me know, we'd love to have you. So that's all I have for better connections, Chris. Okay. And you don't need anything, any action on that. Huh? No, you guys have put that in and put that in yep. and uh, for yep. a while. So, you know, you already, already had approved it like I think two <laughs> years ago, maybe. Yeah, this will be the third year, I think. Uh, yeah, at least. Because we put it in there a couple of years ago when we were talking about the <clears throat> the potential electric car charging stations. Yeah. And so I think that's where it, when it started and then we didn't do it the first year and we added it to the second year and yeah. <laughs> that didn't happen. And yeah. So no, so it's out. It looks like, you know, especially if we're the only one writing for accessibility, we, you know, we stand a good, you know, they already accepted our letter of interest. So our letter of intent to mm -hmm. file. So they were, we already got you know, on to the next phase, which it sounds sounds like Kurt's uh, signing this up. So yeah, that's great though. He was basically <laughs> making sure we get money. So yeah, good news there. Okay. Um, and then we had the Bethel Royalton transfer audit information that um, everybody got. Yep. The um. So anybody the, has any big discussion on that now, or if, or if not, you can always get back to Therese or others with. So this went to the BRTS board at the beginning of the month. I can see Mo nodding, so that's a yes. And then the auditor, Rick Brigham, is coming to their next meeting in February. Mm -hmm. So um, Jen and Mo had done a nice thing and asked, you know, everybody on the BRTS committee that had questions to get them to Jen, you know, a couple weeks prior so I can get them to Rick um, Brigham so that Rick's prepared for whatever the questions are going to be. But um, I think you guys normally get a copy of this, but um, I just wanted it on there. And um, I'm still, Rick is doing our single audit right now because of, you know, FEMA. And then we have the DWSRF. And then he told me today that he thinks we might, because Pinello Bridge and, and the rest of the DWSRF are gonna kick in an extra, it might need a second single audit which I have not budgeted for, but knocking on all sorts of wood in my house right now, um, we will have some legal money we could spend, overspend, audit, underspend, legal. So everybody knock on wood at your house right now and uh, we'll be good. <laughs> so um, I did reach out to FEMA and they're saying no, that we can't put any portion of this single audit, but I did reach out to DWSRF and the program manager there was out. So once I hear, maybe I can get some of it through there. So we'll see. I had a couple of questions, Therese, but I'll probably just catch up with you. Okay. With them. So for the most, I mean, it's, a, it's the same pattern as what you're used to seeing with the town office or the town, mm -hmm. town office, the town in the smaller, so you can see their revenues, expenses, and all that. And, um, but the main thing is that you can see at the time what the due to Bethel was at that moment. And right. so, but like we always talk about, that's just a snapshot in time, and that's just. Right. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, if you have any questions, email me. I'm happy to get back to you. 
Anybody have any questions in regards that they want to get out now or just follow up with Therese behind the scenes if need be? We'll, we'll follow up with Therese. I got, had a couple of questions. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. And then anything that we haven't touched base there, Therese, in regards to your town. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgot about the Campbell. Uh, oh, yeah, me too. I had it there. Uh, so. so like I said, they, they have a loan, which I don't know off the top of my head how much is left to it, but they're going to, when they borrow the 30000 they are going to pay off that loan. So this will be their only loan left. I don't think they have that much. They'll have, uh, basically, they left the interest rate the same at 4%, and then they left them at the same payment. So I have to run an amortization schedule based on their current payment. So Carol said he hadn't done all the math, but it was 30 plus months. Um, so the, he was very happy. I asked if there was collateral. He said no, um, but they did get their financials. And so they were, the revolving loan committee was fine with everything and, and makes the recommendation that they get the loan. So we would yeah. just need a motion um, to approve the revolving loan funds recommendation. And then I'll reach out to Carol tomorrow and he'll call the lawyer. So moved. Second. Lindley moved it. Mm. No, seconded. Seconded. It's all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> all right. And then we had the town manager's report. I know we pretty much went over a majority of it all, but. Um... I think so. Yeah, they did. Um, we. Uh, so I left a note in there. Yeah, so the town report's gone to the printers, so that's good news. Um, always a lot of last minute back and forth. But we regrouped it. I've looked at it because um, Kelly was out last week. So we, we got it out the door. So I'm very excited. Um, I'm sure there'll be a mistake because there's always one that you don't catch. But I'm, the budget's right. Every All those numbers look right. The warrant mm -hmm. was right. So fingers crossed. So that's all I have. Okay. Yeah, because I remember, what was it, last year they cut off a portion of the... Yeah, the warning, yeah. ...services piece, right? And we just, it was one of those things. You looked at it and looked at it and looked at it. But yeah. this time it was good. We got it earlier in the day. And mm -hmm. so I had Dietrich go through it. Then she, then I took it overnight and I went through it to see what I found. And then, um, so we, we were able to get, you know, get two people through it to make sure that... I was trying to make sure all the numbers tied out to the budget. And so the school is doing their own this year because they weren't going to be able to make it on our timeline. And um, so they're going to mm -hmm. be doing their own. Okay. Uh, so the, the other news is that the consent of candidate forms were due today. So Chris Jarvis is running unopposed. And then Wayne Townsend and Jean Krause will be running for the three-year term. Um, so okay. now, um, you know, Pam one will be able to work on the ballot and get that to the printers along with um, programming or card. All right. Did we have any other um, names for any of the other positions other than? <clears throat> no, which means yeah. um, so the lister is the only, is, will be un, will be open. I'm assuming Louise got hers in for her position, but the other lister position will be blank. Blank. Um, we did have a town agent, grandeur, all that sort of stuff. So those were filled. The disappointing thing is the school. Nobody submitted. Pam said for the school, and there were people that when she talked to someone they said they were running well they didn't get the paperwork in mm -hmm. that means whoever draw is drawing the short straw and that counts and that's a hand count the school ballot um you're gonna probably have all write-ins so oh i know it's well who's bad. buying pizza that night because we're gonna be there for a while. well it's at the school no. so it's whoever takes the ballot <laughs> oh. to royalton and you count in royalton i believe correct oh. we counted both spots last year if i remember right yeah we actually i think we went to the central office to the su office yeah, yeah. that's right you went to yeah because usually you leave the town and go to some place for the school so they're gonna have to that's gonna stink i mean hopefully mm. um it's all right in. Yeah. So, because Pam called and was like, "Hey, 
you know, who's running for the school. And they said they had names, but they didn't get their forms in. So and unfortunately, it's just like paying your taxes. Like there is no forgiveness. Like you can't no. sit in tomorrow, you know, mm. it's a, it's a hard close. Yeah, on. So it is. So that's too bad. So our ballot will be full, except for the listers. Um, mm. You can find work with Judy, um, you know, once and um, we'll make a plan for the future. Mm. But so yeah, so that we'll deal with that one, but the school is going to stink. Now you're hand counting the vote, yay or nay, for the Australian, for the budget, which would have been easy enough, but now you're going to be doing that. And you have to yeah. write down every single name to see who's going to get the votes and they need a percentage of the checklist. It's a whole thing. So I yeah. was just, I felt bad. I, I'm disappointed because it just makes more work for the, yeah. for the people counting. Yeah, I think I got a cold coming on for that night, so I won't be able to. Uh... Yeah, I won't go to the school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a long night. Yeah, where we school votes last year. Somebody else has to do it. <laughs> That's right. There you go. Trade off. Yeah. Oh. Get the new BCA members to go. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. I actually had a husband and wife who did it for years. And years mm -hmm. and years in Bethlehem, Brussels. They did it for years. That like the presidential one was actually easy. It was, yeah. and our you know, what, there was only what, like, uh, there was only a couple of handfuls, uh, yeah. you know, ballots that had to be counted behind, you know, yep. what got tabulated, but. And Bethel's will be easy this year because you're tabulating it and you're doing it on, uh, you know, you're counting it and it's, so it would be, Bethel's will be easy. It's the school that's going to, yeah. I feel bad. That's too bad for anybody participating in that. So, <laughs> um, yeah, long night. Yep. So. Uh, we have uh, select board meeting minutes from the 11th. Anybody has any changes? If not, uh, motion to approve. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved by Mo and second by Lindley. And. And then actually we had quite a bit of different uh, committee meeting minutes in this packet. Uh, Recreation committee was in there, the energy committee. Planning uh, commission. Uh, planning was in there. I don't see it in my packet right now, but I read that. Yeah, two rivers is in there. Yep, two rivers, um, transportation. I also gave you all the updated um, warrant or warning and the no remote public informational hearing notice that went into the town report so you could see that because um, mm -hmm. I had to put the I made the zoom link for that one obviously so um, and I had given you I'm not sure do you guys get emailed to you the legislative update like I put yes. it in the packet but I do them already yeah, you have to sign up for it yeah I get one sent to me all right so is that something I don't need to keep putting that in your packet. And I can't remember how I got it, but it started like a year or two ago. And they, I got on the email. I don't know if I gave it to them or if I got signed up somehow. Yeah, they went, they went from paper to email. And if you wanted it, um, yeah. you could still get it by paper, but you had to sign up for it. Yeah, I received mine. So I don't need to keep putting that in the packet then. You guys can get that yourselves. Okay. I wasn't sure. And then with... Um, with uh, Kurt coming, I thought you should see it. And I also made my little note about the back because I have panicked more than once when I've seen the summary of new bills and I've been like, mm. oh my God. And then you call <laughs> your representative and they're like, calm down, Teresa. It's never going to get out of committee. So, right. Um, but there's sometimes you see some harebrained stuff in there. I was reading through them there. Uh, the one, yeah, I was, I was reading through one just the other day of, of the new proposed. Uh, bills that are out there. Of course, there's always they're from all ranges of the spectrum, right? <laughs> yeah. One of the others that you probably will see on the news, I've seen it already, is that um, marijuana that could have been on our warning this year. But with not being able to do it in person, I think that's really difficult, and it will also give us a little more time to research it and see what the legislature is going to do this year. But the town is going to be able to vote on that, so we will be voting probably March twenty. 22 on that but it gives us a little more time to understand the whole issue and what we're going to be voting on and also to um, see what they change while they're in session so that you know I've seen it already on the news that some towns are voting it but that's something I want to be able to do in person and talk about and mm -hmm. 
So um, I just, if that comes up and you see it, I know it's out there, but. All right. Anything else um, come before the board? My dog's running hot laps through the house, so. <laughs> I, <laughs> like attention span has, has ended from the looks of it. <laughs> well, earlier, I don't know if you could hear earlier, but he found the, um, the hardest bone in the house and he was dragging it around all the hardwood floors. So oh, I couldn't hear it. <laughs> so it was all excited. Anything else that, that we have or are we, we good for the evening? I think we're good. Now our, it's not our next meeting, right? Is our next meeting the one, is it part of an informational meeting or is that the one? I, I mean, I think we'll have it on the budget. Uh, we'll have it on the agenda in case people want to talk about it, but it's the 15th is a standalone meeting, which I think yeah. is President's Day. So that's the standalone meeting. And then we'll do it again on the 26th. So I need to reach out to Zoom and so see. So which one, which one, Therese, do I need to be in the office with you? Just the 15th one? Well, let's do it on the 15th and then see if we get a lot of turnout. We'll do it on the 26th. Um, I just wondered if that would be easier, Chris, for you and I to be in the same location, but we can talk about it as it gets closer. Maybe it won't be. I mean, I'll have all my. Yeah, I, I mean, my guess is we will arrange in case somebody calls in and then nobody will and you know, well, that was my concern, you know, prepared. <laughs> you know, putting out your cell phone number. So everybody's called it. I thought if you stay at the yeah. office, or maybe I'll just do it from the office. Cause then if someone calls, yeah. I can answer the phone there instead of publishing all of our yeah. cell phone numbers for someone to call in. Um, mm -hmm. And I think too, I can reach out to zoom to get some sort of, I think I can get like an add on. I'm going to call an expansion pack because I don't know what to call it in case we have a bunch of people, which I doubt we will, but maybe, yeah. I wonder if the 26th or the, whatever the last one in February is won't be more only because by then everybody will have received their town report, but I don't know, hard, hard telling. I mean, the bet man and me says probably won't see more than 10 people, but generally that's, that's, that's it. If that. Yeah. I mean, look at the school, they don't, and they have a much bigger budget than we do. Yeah. So we will see. All right. Well, just uh, need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Everybody have a good evening. All right. Thank you. Stay warm. Yep. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.